Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gore Hamian here with Misfit Studios as always, and today we're going to be taking a look at HitFilm Express and how to remove a green background from yourself completely for free. Before we jump into the video guys, I just wanted to take a few minutes to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously here at Misfit Studios, and a ton of you have yet to subscribe that watch the content here at Misfit Studios. Please hit the sub button, hit the little bell icon so you guys don't miss out on any future content. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's start off by saying that yes, you can most definitely use some chroma keys in OBS Studios or maybe some of your um, softwares that come with your graphics card that do screen capture. Um, this is going to be for if you've already recorded some footage and you want to put yourself into a scene. Um, if you're going to be wanting to do it, on a little bit more some cinematic basis, you got to really pay attention to a lot of the lighting. Um, actually, lighting is probably the one of the most important things. So if you're like wanting to put yourself into a movie, um, that's going to be a completely different setup. And we can go through that. If you guys want to see more of that, put a, put a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. For this one here, though, we're going to be just doing um, some screen capturing. And so maybe you want to do some voiceovers and that kind of thing. So this is going to show you a little bit of rotoscoping, which is kind of the fancy term for removing objects from an animated scene. And so what we've got here is we've actually got, you know, the intro of this video, of course. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this green screen out of the background. So you can actually do this in the editor and in a composite shot. But since this clip is rather short, I'm going to actually going to I'm going to go ahead and make this a comp shot and we're just going to leave the title the as it is. And of course, it is just a, you know, simple scene with a green background. Um, I do have a microphone over here and then it looks like a light that I've got, you know, shooting on the green screen itself. That's one of the most important things about setting up a green screen is make sure that the light on the green screen is consistent. You don't have a whole lot of shadows. Um, I do have, you know, this this shadow here and over on this top left, it looks like we've got some little bit of difference here. So to eliminate as much of that as possible, try and get the green screen as far back away from you as possible. Don't put it right behind your chair because any light in front of you is actually going to cast a shadow behind you and it's going to, you know, distort that filter that we're going to be applying throughout the video. And instead of going through and manually masking off, you know, your actor or yourself or whomever you've got in your scene, you can just use the green screen and go from there. All right, first we're going to apply a key. So we're going to go under the key. You can, of course, um, highlight or you can search this if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and apply the color difference key. And its default is going to be green already. Um, you can use the chroma key, but of course it's going to be an add-on, so you're going to need to purchase that. It does not come with HitFilm Express. So let's go over here to our control panel under our color difference key. And as you can see, it actually it actually looks fairly decent already. Um, I do have a checkerboard pulled up, and so um, if you uncheck the checkerboard, you can see that we've got some some black in the background as opposed to the scene that we're wanting. Okay, and we're going to be putting that scene in here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and turn the minimum up just a little bit. That way we can get rid of all of that green in the black in the background. When you don't have a scene behind it like we do here, um, you want that that um, you want that area that's green to be as black as possible. Um, it looks like everything else actually looks fairly decent if we zoom in. And then I'm just dragging around with the right mouse button. It actually looks fairly decent. So let's go ahead and scale that back to fit. So now what we want to do is we actually want to put this over the top of some footage. So let's go ahead and bring in um, this replay here that I've got. So there's some there's some footage in the background. Um, as you can see, though, that we've got this outside border of when I made the capture, you can see some of the desktop in the background. Um, the same exact steps that we're going to be using to eliminate this background, we're going to use to actually eliminate the side of this ring light and then part of this um, microphone here. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a mask to this. So let's go ahead and select our um, first footage. Actually, we're actually going to change the name of this to actor. And then we're going to change the name of this to the background footage. That way we know the difference between the two between the two. Okay, so 
on the actor or myself, the footage that we've applied the color difference key to, we actually want to put some masks on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and select the freehand mask tool. And we want to actually select everything around this that we want to keep. And so we're just going to go around just like that. And then the moment I close that, you can see that it has removed everything else in the scene other than what I selected. So everything on the outside of that is going to be removed. So now that we've got the max set up, we can actually play through this. And you can see that there is a little bit of waving and that kind of thing. Um, some feathering going on. So what we want to do is we want to sharpen that up again. So let's go ahead and actually, um, we're going to go and mute both of these. That way we can, that way we get, you know, I'm not talking over myself in this one. And what we want to do is we want to go to our color difference key and we're going to be just taking a look at some of this transparency here. And so we can actually turn the max down just a little bit and that's going to give us the ability to take away all of that transparency. Now, this is going to this is not going to cover every single situation with lighting and that kind of thing, especially with the type of camera that you're using, the type of lights, the color of lights. There's a lot of different um you know, variables that can go into this to make this look good. One of the best things that I have found to get great results, like I said previously, is one, keep the um, green screen as far away from behind you as you can. Um, illuminate it with the same color of light that you're illuminating yourself with. And then of course, have the camera as high as you can. You don't wanna have the camera, you know, down below casting weird shadows, especially with the light coming off of your computer or any other light source from underneath. You always want your, your light to be a little elevated. That way you can kind of look down, you know, not on the top of your head, but look look forward and at a little lower angle. These will This will give you the ability to use this tool um, and not get frustrated with it. If you don't have the correct setup initially, it can get kind of frustrating. So anyways, now that we've got this, let's go ahead and just play through this a little bit. And yeah, that actually looks fairly decent. We do have some green um, trim like up around here. And so what we can do is we can actually change the gamma a little bit to get rid of that. We're just turning the gamma down just a smidge. If you don't want to do it too much because what's going to happen is you'll eventually start to deteriorate and disappear. And as you can see, those edges are starting to come closer and closer together, especially on the post that has my um, headphones. And we're just turning that gamut down just a little bit to get rid of that green. So now that we've got everything on the keying setup, what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the size and the position this. And what we can do is we can go back into our control panel after we've got this highlighted. Um, under the transform, we can actually change the scale down and we can actually... Oop, I ended up making a mask. Now that we've got the selection tool selected again, we can actually move this anywhere in the scene that we want. We can actually put this right over here and we back this up a little bit. We can play through this and you can do, you know, all of your voiceovers. You can do, um, you know, really anything that you want. You're putting yourself into that scene and just like you recorded it that way. Now, let's say that you've already put your mask down and you made a little mistake. Like the one of the paths isn't quite in the location that you want. What you can do is you can go back into um, your control panel and you can highlight your mask and then you can select your freehand mask tool again or any mask tool over here you can select the square or if you hold down on this you can select different shapes we're just going to be stuck to the freehand mask tool and what you can do is you can then just edit these nodes and move them anywhere that you want and that way if you've you know made a mistake in putting this mask down already in the first place then um you've You've got a way of come back and ed coming back and editing it without having to redo the entire mask. Go back to your selection tool, make sure that the um, actor footage is highlighted, and then you can move this down. Now what happens is if you don't have the actor footage highlighted and you still have the mask highlighted, even if you've got the selection tool, you will actually move the mask and not the entire footage. We're going to go ahead and control Z and undo that, and then make sure that that um, actor footage or the footage that you're applying this to applying the mask to is the one that you've got selected we can go ahead and put myself right down in there all right now that we've got our mask and everything we've got our actor put in where we want them 
Um, that's really all there is to it. If you guys want to see anything else done in HitFilm Express, leave a comment down below. Maybe some more in-depth rotoscoping or masking. Things of that nature. Please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.